few weeks ago, I visited the EAA Air Venture Show in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. This is the largest air show in the world, and this year attracted more than 600,000 visitors and nearly 10,000 aircraft. Air Venture is a true cornucopia of everything aviation, and the show grounds at Whitman Regional Airport were full of interesting aircraft to check out. Here are some brief views of just a few of them. But to really experience Air Venture Oshkosh, you just have to be there. This is one of the most interesting aircraft that was at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh this year. Openers Black Fly, single seat, all electric, all composite, person carrying basically drone. It can carry somebody weighing up to 200 pounds or six feet, six inches tall. And it does have a ballistic parachute in case something drastic goes wrong. It can fly for up to 25 miles and it won't require any formal certification because it meets the FAA Part 103 ultralight regulations. The Cessna Sky Courier Twin Utility Turboprop arrived for an overnight visit to Air Venture, the first time it has been displayed in public. When you get up close, you see how big an airplane this is. The nearly square-shaped fuselage is designed specifically to accommodate three standard size LD3 cargo pallets, a requirement of launch customer FedEx. A Mary Flight School of Houston, Texas is importing the black shape Gabriel single engine airplane from Napoli, Italy. Now this airplane's been around for a long time and they're hoping that it gets a certification validation in the US soon. It's powered by a 160 horsepower Lycoming engine. It's got Aspen avionics in the panel and it looks like it would be a lot of fun to fly. Now that French aircraft manufacturer Daher owns the Kodiak line, they brought two Kodiaks to their TBM display. This uh, beautiful yellow Kodiak 100 is mounted on Aeroset floats and it makes for a terrific amphibious platform. This is the TBM 940. It's got a five blade composite Hartzell propeller flies up to 330 knots, and it has some interesting features in the cockpit, including an auto throttle and Daher's home safe, which is basically Garmin's new auto land system. In case of pilot incapacitation, anybody on board can push the home safe button and the airplane will basically automatically land itself at the nearest suitable airport. Daher's new Kodiak 100 Series 3 adds some new features. The largest 29 inch tires are now standard as is the 7,255 pound landing weight and zero fuel weight. It also comes with the Timberline interior. Garmin's GWX75 digital radar is now standard. Lots more color than traditional four color radars and also helps you spot turbulence and thunderstorms much better. And the Series 3 is float ready from the factory in case you want to add amphibious floats to your airplane. That includes the pitch latch propeller and lower fuselage skin gap sealant. It's always fun to walk by the vintage section at EAA Air Venture. There are so many beautifully restored airplanes. I just had time for a small taste this year, walking by this uh, beautiful Waco YKC and then the incredible Travel Air, which is a lot bigger than I thought. Also, this lovely polished Cessna 140 celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Cessna 140 and 120. Incredible airplanes here. 
This was probably the most popular attraction at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh this year. YouTube star Mike Pady's Scrappy, which is a Carbon Cub EX3 that has been highly modified. It's got a 780 cubic inch, 600 horsepower, eight cylinder Lycoming engine driving what looks like a modified airboat propeller. It's got dual shock absorbers on the landing gear and it's pretty much infinitely adjustable. The most interesting part is the wings, which are equipped with dual movable slats on the leading edge and drooping ailerons and flaps on the trailing edge. This is going to be a real performer. Maybe not some names you could expect to see at an air show, but Airbus Helicopters has been a long time exhibitor and they have a really nice setup here. Just behind them is the NBAA booth where you can just hang out, relax, and watch the air show. Here's the big Honda Jet Pavilion, and inside is the Honda Jet Elite S, the new model with an extra 200 pounds of payload, which lets you carry an extra passenger or fly another 120 nautical miles with one pilot and five passengers. Also, it has the new nose wheel advanced steering augmentation system. All welcome improvements. The Orbis Flying Eye Hospital is built inside this massive McDonnell Douglas DC-10, which is much larger and more modern than the charitable organization's previous airplane, a DC-8. Hundreds of air venture visitors lined up every day to climb aboard the DC-10 and see the operating rooms where eye surgery training is done all over the world. You can learn more about the Orbis DC-10 in another AI and video, and there's a link to that in this video's description. UPS brought one of its 747-8s just for fun and to let people get on board, take a look. There are always big lines of people every day clambering aboard these aircraft. There was plenty of eye candy for people who like amphibious airplanes, including the Seahawk, the Sea Ray, and with the new electric green paint scheme, Icon's A5. The paint scheme was designed by the talented team at Scheme Designers, and it did attract a lot of attention once the show opened. Diamond Aircraft brought a bunch of airplanes to EAA or Venture this year, but one of the most interesting was the new DA-50 RG. It's a five-seat, all-composite, retractable gear and diesel-powered single-engine airplane and carries 51 and a half gallons of fuel. It's got a huge range of about 750 nautical miles and can climb up to 20,000 feet. Price is 1.15 million base, but options will be up to 1.3 to 1.4 million. Textron Aviation was back in full force this year with a variety of current production airplanes on its outside display from single engine 172 and 182 to twin turboprop King Airs, the CJ4 Gen 2, twin engine jet, the M2 personal jet, and a mock-up of the new Denali single engine turboprop. The Williams International display always includes something interesting like the V-Jet, which used two of its engines and actually flew. It was quite a while ago, but also some jet-powered platforms that were early development projects at the company. Pilatus brought the PC-12 single-engine turboprop and the twin-engine PC-24 jet. The PC-24 is unique. It can land on all sorts of surfaces, including grass, dirt, and gravel. Piper Aircraft had this M600 single-engine turboprop on display at its exhibit, but it turned out it was sold right as the show started, so the new owner 
was going to fly it home from Oshkosh. Piper's sales are doing quite well, and it's backlogged for most of its airplanes through next year. It's always fun to see the Aviat display at Oshkosh with the utility Husky single-engine airplane and also the pitch specials, which they still build brand new in their factory in Wyoming. Cirrus's popular Vision Jet has some new features with the Gen 2 Plus version. It's got the GoGo Advance L3 airborne connectivity now and also some engine modifications that improve hot and high performance. Also on hand at the Cirrus exhibit is the limited edition version, which Cirrus brought out earlier this year to celebrate the 8,000th delivery of a Cirrus SR series aircraft. They've done quite well with these and it's proven to be a popular platform. A quick look at a Cessna Caravan on Whip Air floats and then a walk by the American Champion exhibit. They're still manufacturing the Decathlon, the Scout, and the Cetabria. Beautiful airplanes, very well built, and a lot of fun to fly. Epic Aircraft brought two of its new E1000GX single-engine turboprops to Oshkosh, 3.85 million and cruise speeds of 333 knots quite a performer and a very large cabin that can go fast. You can buy a beautiful brand new freshly built biplane from Waco Aircraft. Either a new Waco based on the old designs with a Jacobs engine or even a more modern Great Lakes biplane powered by a Lycoming engine. Usually you don't see fractional share operations at Oshkosh, but Jetit brought a Honda jet to highlight the company's day use fractional share operation. $1,600 an hour once you buy the share and you can even fly the airplane yourself with a qualified captain. Things got busy on Boeing Plaza. There were a lot of big aircraft and so many people visiting this year, the lines to get into the aircraft were pretty long. Fortunately, the temperatures weren't too, too hot and standing in the shade under a wing was pretty comfortable. Just walking around, we could see the Orbis DC-10, the Airbus A400M in Luftwaffe colors, a McDonnell Douglas C-17, and a bunch of other interesting aircraft tucked in between all the big ones. Of course, not everyone comes to Oshkosh just to look at airplanes and engines and gadgets, but to see the daily air show where top performers put their aircraft through amazing gyrations, warbirds fly in unique formations, and the unusual and never before seen is a regular occurrence. At this year's air venture, we certainly got to experience all the best that aviation has to offer. Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.